Okay, this is Eric Drobel, and you're watching a short workflow video on taking a motion capture clip and putting it onto your character, retargeting that animation inside of Maya, and then making sure that even with different proportions, doing a real quick first pass that everything is where it needs to be, that it's ready for animation cleanup. So the whole process took me about an hour, hour and 10 minutes, and I'm going to speed it up for brevity's sake and run through it fast. But if you have any questions, drop them down below. You know where the comments are on YouTube, I hope, by now. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, call your mother, do whatever you feel like, uh, as long as it doesn't hurt anyone else. Cheers. So before getting into the retargeting stuff, real quick, wanted to talk about all the tools that I'm using and I've used to get to this point. Maya clearly is the main DCC package that I use. To model this guy, I use a combination of Maya and Noban Sculpt. There's a bunch of assets uh, that I bought off of uh, stores like his clothes and I kitbashed to fit onto him. For kitbash assets, I have a few sources. Uh, Sketchfab is great. There's a lot of free stuff in addition to purchase models and things. There's ArtStation has a lot of really good stuff. 3D scan store for faces. And then finally, this specific motion capture clip uh, that I'm using was purchased off of the Unreal Marketplace. For rigging, I'm using the beloved free M gear. I, for skinning, I'm using NG Skin Tools, which is also beloved by me. For animation and various supporting tools, I'm using Animbot. For pose and animation saving, I'm using Studio Library. For a GUI Picker system, I'm using Anim School Picker. And the, the DJ asset purchased from Sketchfab. The retargeting tool, I hope I'm saying the name right, is from Your Engberg. Uh, link below, it's a free retargeting tool, it's pretty great. So the first step with this, because the character proportions are very different, you know, we have a whole different style of leg, huge long arms. Proportionally, the legs are very tiny because he never really stands up straight. This is pretty much his neutral pose that we're looking at. So the first step then it would be to take your FBX rig that you have imported, um, which should have animation on it. Here I have the rig imported without animation, which you can do in the FBX import menu by unclicking animation. And this just gives you a nice T pose, which can help you uh, with setting up the retargeting or at least just measuring uh, the size that you want. Your so to do this, you can put your FBX rig into a group and resize the group. In the end, your rig will be following everything and then you can bake that out. So you just wanna put it in the, the best place. You will be able to tweak it in a little bit so now I'm importing the uh, FBX with animation. Still setting up my scene. I'm getting my GUI picker ready so that I can easily select controls. I'm getting my graph editor where I want it. Setting my namespace. Now here I'm going directly into the, the original joints. I'm removing all the scale keys because they're, they're not animated, but they do have keys on them. And I'm just going to shrink the legs. The animation stays intact. They just get smaller. And this is proportionally much closer to my rabbit. The spine and the arms are much longer. Moving the rig pivot to the base of the floor to make scaling easier. So now I'm opening up the retargeting tool and the basic process for this is you select the joint first and then the control that you want to follow that joint. There are some nuances, different types of controls you can do. Um, you know, if you click on that little question mark there inside the tool, it'll take you to some links with YouTube tutorials that are pretty great. So I'm not going to go over it. The creator does a great job. You know, you set up your connection and then you are still able to, in this case, change the rabbit's positioning to better match. And in this case, all that's falling right now is the hips. And I'm just trying to find the best position for that hip. The, the translation is automatically placed to match, but the rotation is going to be up to me. You might want it to be slightly different. In this case, the spine angle is pretty much exactly where I wanted it, so I did very little to change his spine. One thing I'll do is to match rotations uh, because rotation spaces can change uh, in this workflow is I'll just select the original head joint, take a look at what the manipulator rotation is at, and then I'll select the rabbit's head joint and then try to match a similar manipulator rotation. Eyeballing is perfectly fine for this stage because it's, it's all going to get cleaned up later. It all needs to stay pretty rough. We're just trying to prove that the animation can work in this stage, in the space that we have, with the props that we have, with the rig that we have. Now that I've got the spine, head and neck more or less where I'm, I'm happy with, I'm gonna move on to the arms. Because I'm using a M gear rig, there's a really easy tool to automatically convert your FK to IK and vice versa. So normally my workflow would be to use this retargeter to retarget to both the FK arms and IK arms, but because I have this feature inside of the rig, 
I don't need to do that. I only need to retarget one. And then later when I'm ready to clean up, I can use mGear to convert my arms, my hands in this case, to IK, saving me some retargeting time. You know, I'm noting here when I'm posing out the hands that the skinning isn't quite perfect. That is absolutely part of what this test is for, is to further help finesse and finish this rig. To a certain extent, it's good to be animating while you're building the rig because that way you can test it and not assume that the rig is everything you need to, to have. You can really put it through the ringer and build it up as you go. And that's why I'm starting to animate before the rig is finished. One thing I really like to do personally as an animator, and I, I try to tell everyone I, I can about this, is I like to set my perspective cameras to be as orthographic as possible. Not fully orthographic, but very close to it. Notice how right now my camera angle almost looks like a front view or a side view. Basic cameras are not set up for this automatically because of the near clip plane and the far clip plane and the focal length. Take your camera, set your focal length to something like 300, 400 for wide screens. Then you're going to get some weird screen artifacts. To fix this, you go into your camera shape options. You'll find the near far clip plane. The near clip plane is going to be at something like 0 0.001. Make that number about five. And then the far clip plane, you want to add a whole two zeros to that number, make it much, much bigger. Now your camera will behave like a orthographic camera without any graphical glitches. And you'll be able to get a much better sense of the pose structure as you move around and look at it from cardinal angles or even three quarter angles if that helps you in the situation. But for me, the line of action in his very, very long arms, long hands, long fingers, in IK, it's really easy to lose the sense of realistic arms if you're not taking a look from above or the side view and making sure the line of action is correct. And so that's, that's why I like doing this with my camera. It's really easy for me to rotate around and quickly put that pose in all axis where I want, instead of saving it for later and banging my head against trying to polish a pose that was never structurally sound in the first place. So one of the biggest issues here now is that even though my legs are in IK, the motion capture has a lot of movement on them, particularly because we scaled the legs, right? So that, that, that hopping up and down is even worse than it was with the original mocap. I would say cleaning that up fully is polish because there's so much hopping, um, but I am gonna take a quick pass at reducing it, stabilizing it again so that we know this can work, right? With so much hopping right now, it's a little hard to tell that this animation can work. I decided that the speakers too close in really don't give him enough room to do what he needs to do, especially with those giant hands. So I'm going back into the, the prop asset and moving the speakers. Now that I'm happy with the retargeting, you basically just click Bake All Animation. It gets rid of all the nodes that it created. My previous rig is still there in Peach. Now I'm watching my animation against that Peach rig to see how it holds up. It's looking pretty good. In a little bit, I'll remove that rig because I don't need it anymore, but for now, I want to throw on some facial expressions that I had done previously using Studio Library to quickly plug it in. A normal workflow, I would have some hand poses built already, but because this character is so new, we don't have that. And also, we're not worrying about finger poses right now. That's, that's for polish. So now I'm thinking, okay, how can I clean up these feet quickly? And it's really the up and down that's bothering me so much. There is some left and right sliding, but that's a smaller issue, I think, than the up and down. First things first, I'm making a new animation layer to, to make my mocap adjustments. And then I'm making sure his hips are where I want. But then I'm realizing, oh, to do that, I need to put the arms in the correct space because they are following. Here, I am using mGear to bake the hands to IK. And then I'm using AnimBot to create world space versions of those IK hand controls. I could also have done that with my mGear space switching. I just find AnimBot a little bit quicker and more intuitive to use. And also you can easily change the space to whatever after you've already animated it. Now I can move around his body without the hands moving. His feet are already in world space, so no need to do anything there. Now with his feet selected, I'm popping open the graph editor and I'm taking a look at that up and down curve. Both of his feet selected at once. I'm gonna try and kill two birds with one stone a little bit. And I wanna take out all those up and downs that don't look like either he's taking a step or he's getting up on his heel. If he's getting up on his heel, if he's rolling his foot, that's all movement I want. I don't wanna get rid of that. I'm gonna polish that later. But there's also a lot of hops up and down that that actor is not really doing. That's the mocap being bad. And that's our scaling making it even worse. So 
I'm going into spots where I can tell there's no foot moves, there's no rocking on the ball of your foot, and I'm just flattening that out. I have a lot of hotkeys hooked up to an Anabot that allow me to just instantly blend 100% to my neighbors, and that's what I'm doing right here to flatten. And then I'm just making sure that the, the feet are where they need to be at the very end so that this is a, the looping animation still loops. Taking a look at the animation, sure there's still a lot of sliding back and forth, but the up and down now is way less reduced on the feet. It feels like he's actually kind of on the ground, so it'll be much easier to clean up from here on out. With the feet and spine now in a good position, I can think about those freakishly long arms and hands. There's a lot of contacts, there's scratching of the records, there's flipping of the dials, there's switches, there's knobs. I'm not going to worry too much about those contacts or fingers right now, but the general vicinity needs to work so that I can prove out this animation. And so that, again, like I said earlier, with all this reaching and stuff, the top view is going to be your biggest friend. Bottom view, side view, front view. You want to look at them all because if you animate IK without doing that, you're not going to have good arcs. You're not going to have good post structure. One of the things the mocap retargeting is doing is it's throwing off my elbow pull vectors a little bit. So I've got to pull those out and not necessarily reanimate them, but in some points, reduce the extreme. There's a few points where I can tell that he's like touching something, but it's not necessarily reading because the mocap is sliding around too much. I'm taking a little bit of extra work to rotate the hand or think about timing so that the knobs twist or that scratch really reads as him touching something and not just randomly sliding across the table. To get an eye for that kind of thing, honestly, you really just need to be exposed to a lot of motion capture. You, know, you need to do a lot of motion capture cleanup and you kind of need to get used to the types of things that motion capture does wrong. Do that long enough and then you get a very good sense for the kinds of things that need to be cleaned up. You get a very good sense of what that's supposed to be because you've seen it many times before. Details, 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 at least as far as first pass goes. I'm noticing that the head movement is a little bit too big in some places. At some points, it looks like he's looking way past the DJ table. At some points, well, through most of it, really, he's looking too low. We don't get a sense of his face anymore, and, and that just won't be good to look at in the game. I'm picking some moments where I'm, I'm actually deviating from the acting to get him to lift up more and look at the crowd. But then there are also moments where I'm reducing the extremes so that it still looks like he's looking at the turntable. I should say another huge part of my process is making sure that the rigs are real time. I don't want to animate anything that's slow, unless I absolutely have to. I think there's a huge lack of understanding in the industry uh, with production producers, executives, studio owners, just how much slow rigs slow down everything exponentially. So a huge tenet for this game, for Neuro Spicy Studio, is to never have a slow rig. And if it's a slow rig, find another way to animate it because it's like animating with a fish. All right, well, I hope you found this video educational, entertaining, um, good. Like I said, if you have any questions, comments, stories, poems, please leave them in the comments. It makes the algorithm do better things than what it is currently doing. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year.